All right, guys, in today's video, I'm going to be installing a new radiator, thermostat, hoses, and water inlet housing on my 2006 Toyota Land Cruiser. Hope you guys enjoy the video. Let's get started on the job. First, I'm removing the negative terminal on the battery. This is a 10 millimeter nut, and I torque that to 66 inch pounds. Removing the engine cover, we have two 10 millimeter nuts and two 10 millimeter bolts. Those are all 66 inch pounds as well. And now I'm removing the engine undercover. You have seven 12 millimeter bolts. Those are all 21 foot pounds. And last I'll remove the air box. So we have two 10 millimeter bolts here. Very low torque, 44 inch pounds on those. And then I'll remove a few vacuum lines here. Sometimes those get stuck. You can just use a flat head to help nudge those off. Now I'm removing the wiring harness on the mass airflow sensor. And with the 10 millimeter socket, loosen up this clasp. Don't forget those clips on the air box. And then you can get some leverage and twist that right off. First, I'm draining the radiator itself. This is the easiest one to get to. You don't need to use any sort of tubing here. It's actually easier to just directly drain it. And I'll show you a shot of the setup here in just a second. Removing the radiator cap will help speed things up a little bit. And here's my setup. I'm just using this giant Erlenmeyer flask because I was really curious how much fluid I would actually be able to drain out. The total coolant capacity for a 2006 with the rear heater is 16.2 quarts, which is about 15,300 milliliters. Now I'm going to drain the engine block. Here's a quick shot to help orient yourself. And for this, you're gonna to wanna to use your 5 16 inner diameter tube. That will be really helpful to drain this. And you'll need a 10 millimeter socket on the driver's side here. The torque spec on those is nine foot pounds. After loosening that up and letting it drain for a while, I was able to get about 3,800 milliliters out of the driver's side. Once that finishes draining, now we're gonna move on to the passenger side. This one is also a little tricky to find because it's behind those two lines you see there. It's symmetric to the driver's side. So if you've already found the one on the driver's side, you can reach up and expect to find it in the same place on the passenger side. This was an even tighter working area, so I'm just using a ratcheting wrench to loosen that up. Same as the driver's side, 10 millimeters, nine foot pounds for a torque. As expected, I got the least amount of coolant on this side, about 1800 milliliters when it was all done. So that brings the total to 10,000 milliliters out of the 15,000 capacity. What you'll see me remove next are the nuts and bolts along the AC discharge tube and the wire harness. Then we have a few more along the top of the fan shroud and two more bolts holding the radiator reservoir assembly. Since there are quite a few nuts and bolts here to remove, I'm not going to go through each step, but you can refer back to this image. The only note I have here is the torque specs on these are all basically hand tight. So you see 44 inch pounds for the AC tube and fan shroud, and then 71 inch pounds on the radiator reservoir assembly. Okay, let's get into it. I just needed two socket sizes here, a 10 millimeter for the AC discharge tube and then the bolts that are directly in to the radiator from the fan shroud, those are 12 millimeters. The extensions came in really handy for me here. I actually wish I had an, an even longer one, not for this particular part, but uh, you'll see it a bit later where the longer extension would be handy. So here I'm removing the reservoir and then there's just one more 12 millimeter bolt on the fan shroud hidden underneath that. Now I'm removing that last little hose with a metal hook there. This one came off pretty easily. And then using a set of hose clamp pliers to remove that upper radiator hose. Here I'm removing the nuts on the fluid coupling. I still don't have the right tool to stabilize the fluid coupling, so I'm just using my ratchet with an extension to pry in there and stabilize it while I loosen each of the nuts. With those loose, now I remove the drive belt, so you'll need a 14 millimeter socket here, 
And you'll see I'm pulling to the left to detension the belt. And once you have it detensioned, then you can slide the belt over one of the pulleys. With all of that out of the way, the fan shroud and the fan come out together. So just work that around all of your tubes. And once you have enough space, you can get the fan out and the fan shroud will come right out. Now I'm loosening the clips on the oil cooler inlet and outlet tubes. Here again, I'm using the metal hook. These tubes were kind of a pain to get off. That's sort of why I'm showing the extra footage here uh, in case you're also struggling with it. Um, you just be patient and kind of work it off. And once you actually pry it a little bit away from the metal tube, it should slide the rest of the way off pretty easily. I used a couple of smaller plastic beakers just to catch the residual coolant in the lines here. And next I'll tackle this larger hose on the left. Especially with these heavier duty constant tension clamps, having a pair of hose clamp pliers was pretty helpful. They kind of lock in place so then you can just focus on moving that clamp out of the way. It's a really good idea to wear safety glasses, mainly because they look cool, but also because you're working with fluids that could damage your eyes. And that actually did splash all over my glasses. I let that hang out to drain and moved on to the thermostat next. I used the longer metal hook here, and after sliding that in the water inlet, I just worked that around the radiator hose until I was able to pry it off. The water inlet has three 12 millimeter nuts and it looks like mine had a little extra sealing on it so I needed to give it a few taps to pry that loose. I'm installing a new gasket in thermostat so you can just work that gasket along the outside edge of your thermostat there. And the only special note on this guy, you'll see that little pin, it's called the jiggle valve and it needs to be facing straight upwards. It can be plus or minus 30 degrees from that position and still function properly. I went around and tightened these nuts by hand first and then torqued them down to 14 foot-pounds. This is the last hose to remove before we can take the radiator out. Again, just slide that constant friction clamp off and then work that metal hook underneath until you're able to slide off that hose. So the radiator itself is held down by two nuts and two bolts. It's a little tricky to film so I'm showing you this diagram here and first I'm removing the nuts across the top here. Those are both 12 millimeters and 15 foot-pounds of torque. And now we just have two more bolts that are holding the radiator down. These are also 12 millimeters and they're pretty far down. So here's where that really long extension would come in handy. But once you get them out, now the radiator is ready to be removed. And one additional note for you, you might have to remove the entire battery. For me, I just could not make enough space to get the radiator out otherwise. And with that out, now we're ready to install the new radiator. Here's a quick look at mine before it goes in. And don't forget that you need to save the brackets from the old radiator there. Since I was doing this job myself, I wanted to add a little protection before sliding in the radiator. So I just used the cardboard that it came in and created a little barrier between that and the AC lines there. And this just took a little bit of finagling to get down there, but you actually have pretty good handholds on the radiator. I'm leaving in this full footage here of me struggling a little bit to put it in just so it might uh, help you assess your approach. And the only real challenge I had was getting hung up on some of the lines where my left hand is right there. But moving the radiator back and forth left to right, I was able to get it situated on its mounting points. Now we're officially moving on to the reinstall process. So here are the two mounting bolts. I put those in first just to stabilize the radiator. Those are both 12 millimeters and torque to nine foot pounds. The nuts across the top 
are also 12 millimeters. Those are 15 foot pounds of torque. One note on, on this, I actually ended up buying all new hardware here. I've been finding that some of these older nuts and bolts tend to be a little bit fragile. So it seems worth the extra few bucks to just get new ones. Now I'm reinstalling the oil cooler inlet and outlet tubes, and then I'll move on to the larger radiator hose. Here's a top and bottom view of installing that hose. The main note here is that little paint mark is to help you orient the hose on the radiator so that it doesn't have to be twisted a lot on the water inlet side. Otherwise, take a look at those comments I have before and I'll move on to installing the fan shroud now. Just like taking it out, the fan shroud and the fan and fluid coupling need to go in together as one piece. I would recommend having the nuts for the fluid coupling handy. That way, once you get it over the bolts, you can secure one of those so that the fan will hang while you orient the fan shroud. Now I'm just reinstalling all of the hardware. The only comment I have on this is at the bottom part of the fan shroud. There's a little lip that fits into a corresponding part on the radiator, but if you miss that and just put the bolts in like I am right here, then you actually won't be able to situate that. You'll have to take it off and put it back on. Now I'm wrapping up the last few pieces of hardware for the fan shroud. And finally your friction clips on that upper radiator hose. Here's the new radiator reservoir. And I'm connecting that tube up to the top part of the radiator and reinstalling the mounting hardware for that. Now I'm fastening the four nuts that hold the fluid coupling. Those are again, 12 millimeters and 21 foot pounds. The last few steps before refilling the coolant, we need to reinstall the battery air box and the drive belt. You can refer to those at the beginning of the video and now I'll move on to refilling the coolant. I picked up one of these radiator refill kits from Harbor Freight. It seemed to work pretty well. I was happy with the results. And now I'll refill the coolant in two stages. First, I'll fill the radiator as much as I can up until the full line on the radiator reservoir. At that point, we can squeeze the inlet and outlet tubes just to get any extra air out of those. And then we need to warm up the Land Cruiser. So once it warms up, the thermostat is gonna open and then that will suck in some coolant to the engine block. At that point, we can continue refilling until we reach the capacity. I didn't film this in too much detail here and I'll link to some other videos focused on just the refill. But here I am warming up the Land Cruiser. Uh, you don't actually have to turn the fan on all the way, just the temperature needs to be set all the way to hot. So I'm sitting in the Land Cruiser I have the RPMs held between 2000 and 2500 RPMs. In the FSM, they're essentially using the reservoir to do what I'm doing here. So as you're warming up the Land Cruiser, the reservoir of course will go down from full to say the minimum line. Then you can refill the reservoir and then that will get pulled into the radiator. Once you've bled all of the air out of the system and your radiator reservoir is sitting at the full line, now you're ready to take it for a test drive. If everything looks good after the test drive and that reservoir is still sitting at full, then you're good to go. As always, I hope you guys found this video helpful. And if you have any tips or tricks, feel free to leave them down in the comments. Otherwise, I'll see you guys next time. Peace.